no. Now, today I would like to do some comparisons of um, some of the dip nibs I have. And here they are. I'll show you one by one. Some of the, these are some of the most popular dip nibs used today. Um, now, first of all, is my favorite, the Spencerian number one. This is a vintage nib that is not being made today. Now, um, then it is the Gillots 303, which is um, this particular one is a vintage nib, but they are making new ones, um, new versions of this one today and you can still buy them brand new and same as this one here which is a Gillots 404 uh, slight difference between the two I'll show you later uh, this one here is also a vintage one I like the vintage version of these Gillot snips better um, I don't Quite sh I'm not quite sure why I've tried them both. I just found the vintage ones more responsive and ink flow, everything is just better. Now, these are new ones, these are new, new production, new production nips. Um, let's just start with this one. This is the Hunt Imperial, a very nice trident um, like hole. Uh, uh, let's go with this one. This is the uh, the principal EF. Um, the vintage version of this one. This is new. The vintage version of this one is considered a legend. Considered one of the hardest to found and the best to use. I never tried, so I can't really compare. But um, I hope the um, the new reproduction. It's just as good. I don't know. Now, uh, this here is a Japanese nib, uh, Nikko G nib. Very nice, very smooth, very shiny, as you would expect from the Japanese. <laughs> um, here's another one, another G nib from Japan, called the uh, the zebra zebra nib. All right. Now I'm going to um, write them one by one to show you the difference. All right. Let's start off with my favorite. My very favorite is Spencerian number one, which is not in production anymore, so it's very hard to find. Well, uh, it's considered one of the better nips of the older days. Olden days. Now I'm just going to use some regular fountain pen ink, the Mont Blanc Midnight Blue. Nothing fancy. No. India ink or anything like that, nope. Just regular fountain pen ink. Yeah. Looks like it's taking quite a lot of ink. Now this is the uh what is it? The Spencer in number one. I'm not gonna work Spencer in. Yeah. Maybe I am. Spencer. Now, usually when people uh, when you when you want to do it properly, you don't just dip and start writing again. You write on another surface, another piece of paper, just to get the feel, get the ink flowing correctly. Again, then you start to write. But this is just a demonstration. Spencer. Of course, I'm using copper plate to write Spencer in. Uh, the irony. Anyway, um, this is the number one. 
Now, the thin line is very thin, it's close to needle point, and the thick line is about two, two millimeter thick, and it's very flexible. I really like it. It's not extremely flexible, it's not red noodle or anything, but um, it's about a full flex, not exactly a super flex. Super, full, thereabouts. Yeah. It's still very controllable, very manageable to write slowly. It's very nice. Relatively smooth for tip lip. You can, you can hear the scratchiness. <laughs> But anyway, so this is my oh, one of my favorite. Sorry, just grabbing a piece of tissue. Next one I'm going to demonstrate is the uh, 303. This is another one of my um, favorite. All right, the three. Oh, three. Now the thin line on this one is thinner than the Spencer Rear number one, and it's more, it's even more flexible than the Spencer Rear number one. But the thick line is not as thick, so it wouldn't. It's, it's softer, but it's not wider. It gives a very distinctive line variation. They're very easy um, to you are uh, very easy on your hand because it's so soft, but it's slightly less manageable because it's so soft. Quite a lot of ink comes out from um, the, th uh, the thick lines, so you need some really good paper or some very good ink to avoid any feathering. Just, just quickly. Oh, um, yes, because it's so pointy, because it's so thin, it's, um, it's very scratchy. Excuse my handwriting, I'm just doing it very roughly. Anyway, so this is um, the 303. Now the 404. In a classic. The the 404. Now, <clears throat> this one is as flexible as 303, so it's very soft, but the thin line is not as thin, and the thick line I would say it's slightly thicker than a 303. So in terms of, um, in terms of line variation is very similar to the Spencer Rear number one but it is more flexible than the Spencer Rear number one alright in terms of flexibility those two are pretty much the same alright so these are f it's, it's quite a nice comparison you know it's, one lip has some advantage over another but um, some disadvantage as well I like this, like I say, I like the Spencerian because it's because it's not as flexible. It's more responsive, if you know what I mean. The snapback of the nib is faster um, as well for the Spencerian. Um, that means you can close up the lines much tidier. Well, you can't really see on this example because <laughs> because I'm not that good. 
Now that's it for my Fender Snape connection. A uh, collection. Con connection. Collection. Now let's go with the uh, the newer nips. Um, now um, the old favorite, the legend itself, the principal EF, but a remake of the legend. Here we go. The EF. So far, so good. It's thin, very scratchy, not a lot of ink, not holding a lot of ink. I would say it's somewhere between the 303 and the 404, but it's slightly more flexible. Slightly. Um, slightly more, f sorry, it's slightly more flexible than the 303 and the 404, but the line variation is somewhere in between. Alright. The, the, the third line is not as thin as the, uh, 303 but they're not as thick as the 404 somewhere in between see they, they are not that different from one another for general purpose of just regular practicing uh, it, it holds a reasonable amount of ink it's not bad I can see why it was a um, old favorite. It is still an old favorite. I'm sure there are some other advantages of it as well, but I can't see it. Also, the 303 and 404 is very similar in terms of flexibility and responsiveness as well. I still like, you know, I still like the Spencerian more. Now let's. Um, go with this one also a very similar design to the EF is the Hunt Imperial Hunt Imperial Hunting the Imperial stupid joke is stupid anyway <laughs> um, here we go so this is the Whoa! Now, this is this may be because I haven't broken it broken it in yet. All right. So when nibs come, um, when they're brand new, okay, they have a coating on it. They have a oily coat on it that you're supposed to get rid of it first. I did that, I thought I did that at least, but you know, maybe some residue um, on it that I'm not aware of. And what that does is that it, you know, um, if, if the oil is on it, ink will just slip right off, giving you a big blob like this. Not very pleasant, so it's recommended that you break it in first, write a lot, because you know, if you, um, ink can, can, can get rid of the oily coating as well so the more you use it the more sticky it becomes for lack of a better word sticky okay this is slightly better okay so Hmm. It's better than I thought. It's better than the EF, I think. The Hunt. Um, it's smooth. The thin line is relatively thin, as you can see. The thick line is thicker than many, slightly thicker than the EF. 
than everything else really. So this is the most flexible one of them all as well. I think. Look at that. Yes, it is very flexible and very soft. It gives you a very thick line. And very, very nice um, return line variation as well. So what I mean by return line variation is the the, the thickness of the uh, of the line after you flex it. Okay. Sometimes with fountain pen nibs, anyway, it's very different when you when you try to write it regularly, and when you're trying to write it after you flex it. Okay, the carryover. Um, the carryover ink, the carryover ink from the thick line sometimes transfer onto the thin line here, which makes it a lot thicker than um, what it begins with. All right? So, so even though it produces such a thick and heavy thick line, it still managed to give me a very thin, thin line. So this is very good. This is actually really good. The Hunt Imperial. Wow, I'm surprised. But you don't need you don't need the thickest um, or the most flexible line to 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 write co uh, copper plate or spencer in. As long as there is a certain degree of line variation, which all of them give you you are good to go. You don't need the thickest line, you don't need a, a line as thin as this and thick as the pages itself. No, that's, that's just crazy, that's just not very nice to look at at all. As long as there's some line variation, a very distinctive line variation, you're good. It doesn't have to be thick, it doesn't have to be really thick. So don't try to get the wettest noodle or the thickest line, uh, thickest flexed line nib you can get. Go with the one that you're most comfortable with. Because sometimes the thicker the line the harder it is to control. See, with thinner lines a slightly off course, okay, slightly wiggle, it's not going to be very noticeable, but with a thicker line it is quite noticeable. Some may um, disagree with me on this one, but anyway, let's just go with the um, uh, the next nip, which is a Japanese nip, a Nikko a, a Nikko G nip. Okay, oh, it's a huge nip that I can't even really fit into my tip pen. Oh, this is better. No. Nickel. This is this is horrible. <laughs> anyway, so um, it's stiff. Now this is the example, this is exactly what I was talking about. It doesn't have to be very flexible, it doesn't have to be a wet noodle, and it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to give you a thick, juicy line, well it's still juicy, but it's, it's not thick, right? So, it is very manageable. Now see, now this is the returning line variation I'm talking about. Now this is what I think is the downfall of this nib. You see, the um, the the line before I flex is thin. The line, uh, the thin line after I flexed, 
a sticker. This is not very good. Well, for me anyway. Because, well, you want it to be consistent, obviously. You want the thick line to be similarly thick throughout your um, your writing, the same as your thin line. And it's very hard to um, keep your letters, letter spacing equal if you have some thin and some thicker lines. You know what I mean? So. Even though this is a very manageable nip with <laughs> nice smooth tip, uh, I'm not sure if I like it that much. This is the uh, the nickel G nip made in Japan. Hmm. Now the last one I'm going to try out today is the zebra G nip. Again, made in Japan. I don't know why they call it a G nip, but. Anyway, uh, this is another indication um, of oil residue. You see blobs and dots of ink just randomly scattered on the nip, and, and blobs of ink as well. It's not smooth in the smear, okay? It's not smearing over the nip, so this is not very good. Let me. Let me, let me try and clean it up a bit better. What I have here is a um, tissue, piece of tissue with some soap on it. So, just trying to get rid of the oil. No, to clean it, of course. You don't want soap on your nip as well. It breaks down the ink. Well, it breaks down the um, the surface tension of the ink, making it harder to write with. Anyway, I hope this is better. Not that much better, but I'm just going to go with it anyway. So this is the zebra. Now, the difference between the Nico and the Zebra is very similar to the difference between the 303 and the 404. Both pair have similar flexibility, and these are um, super flexible, fully, fle fully flexible. These are not that flexible, but um, the Zebra is like the 303, giving you slightly thinner. Um, thick and thin lines um, while the nickel give you thicker lines and the line and the returning line variation it's better with the zebra slightly better there's still some difference between the two so I these are very um, easily obtainable nibs, very um, rather cheaply too. So I would suggest you try these out first. Oh well, yes, because they are very easy to um, use, very manageable, very tough. Looks good. The only downside is the uh, the returning line variation is, is different. If you know, yeah, like I said before. But if you don't care about that too much, these are very um, beginner snip, if I, if you like. And then go with um, the EF, I think. Now the hunt is a very flexible and very thick. If you know what you're doing, if you know exactly what you're doing, the hunt is very good. All right. I don't know what I'm doing, so. <laughs> So, so I'm not 
going to be using the hunt for any time too soon but I'm going to stick with um, 303 and a 404 for now <sighs> next time I may try to um, give you a demonstration between the new versions and the old version of the 303 and 404 because I would love it if the, if the new versions work as good as the old version but because they are because they're, they're so e uh, readily available and you can't find well you can still find some vintage one for um, the 303 and 404 but they're, they're getting harder to find obviously because they are throwaway nips anyway so here are the nips again the Zebra, the Nico, the EF Principal, the Hunt Imperial, the 303-44, and my favorite dispensary number one. Thank you for watching. Bye.